today we are going to talk about that how carbon, di carbon dioxide which is produced in the tissues, how it is transported from the peripheral tissue to the lungs so that it can be expelled out of the body. Let's suppose here we have drawn few cells, this these cells represent the peripheral tissue, right? And during the metabolic processes, there is release of carbon dioxide. Which metabolic processes release carbon dioxide? Classically, carbon dioxide is released in aerobic respiration, right? When you break down the glucose or you break down the fatty acids with the help of oxygen, is that right? You produce water and carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide is a waste product. It must go out of the body. Now, so peripheral tissues are constantly producing carbon dioxide, so it means partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the cells where carbon dioxide is produced is high. Because partial pressure of carbon dioxide is high, suppose in the cell, naturally from partial pressure, high partial pressure will drive away to low, pressure. low pressures. So from the cells, carbon dioxide comes to interstitial fluid. Is that right? How carbon dioxide is transported? from inside of the cell to the outside of the cell? Who will answer? Francisco. How the carbon dioxide is transported from the cell, from interior of the cell where it is produced to the interstitial fluid? Yes, please. A simple diffusion. Carbon dioxide is lipid soluble. There is no special transporting mechanisms required because carbon dioxide is a lipid soluble gas. Do you think carbon dioxide is more soluble or oxygen is more soluble? Carbon dioxide is more soluble. Carbon dioxide is about 25 or 27 times more soluble as compared to oxygen. Anyway, even though carbon dioxide is being produced in the cells continuously, but it is highly soluble in the lipid, so it dissolves into cell membranes and through the simple diffusion process, it comes into interstitial fluid and there again it is present in dissolved form. And dissolved carbon dioxide from the interstitial fluid right is shifting or diffusing into capillary fluid is that right now once carbon dioxide come into the capillary fluid then what really happens to it that is the question the how it is transported back to the lungs right remember carbon dioxide even though it is more soluble than oxygen but all of the carbon dioxide cannot be dissolved into plasma fluid why because if all the carbon dioxide which is produced in our body every minute if you want all carbon dioxide to be dissolved and to be transported into dissolved form we need very high pressures and they are not present in human body is that right again let me tell you carbon dioxide is produced in big amount in the body how much carbon dioxide is produced every minute how much carbon dioxide is produced in a resting human being every minute approximately approximately every minute you produce 200 ml of carbon dioxide you know this thing that in a resting human being how much oxygen is delivered to the peripheral tissue every minute 250 right listen this is a very interesting concept now uh, every minute oxygen which is delivered from the lungs to the body tissue is 250 ml at right total oxygen from the lungs going to the tissues is 250 ml and every minute the carbon dioxide which is produced is about 200 ml now uh, why oxygen is supplied more and carbon dioxide produced is less L let me tell you the oxygen which is going to tissue is 250 ml per minute this is the oxygen going to the tissues is that right and from the tissues, carbon dioxide which is coming out every minute, of course we are considering a resting person, healthy normal resting person, that is 200 ml per minute. Of course, this oxygen is appearing here, if there is aerobic respiration. Why more oxygen is going and why less carbon dioxide is produced, someone with very good brains will answer. I think question goes to that lady. Okay. My question is that right now my lungs are providing my body every minute 250 ml of oxygen. 
and every minute they are bringing uh, bringing out 200 ml of carbon dioxide question is that this oxygen is appearing here as a part of carbon dioxide now question is this why more oxygen is delivered and why less carbon dioxide is produced anyone please there is a topic called biochemistry it's a very basic of metabolism please tell me when we break down the glucose with oxygen some oxygen goes as carbon dioxide and remaining oxygen goes with water my friends it's so simple you heard of things like that you know we say that glucose what is that c6 h12 o6 we add oxygen and you get lot of of course energy adp convert into atp and through many many steps eventually you end up with lot of carbon dioxide and water is that right so all the oxygen which is going from out some of it is utilized in other pathway also maybe that is becoming part of water that was a very simple answer that is why we get more oxygen and produce less carbon dioxide because we are producing water also am i clear and production of water requires oxygen claro okay let's come back now carbon dioxide is coming to the blood i said carbon dioxide if you want to transport all the carbon dioxide which is produced during every minute in the dissolved form then you have to have a very high pressure to keep this carbon dioxide dissolved and bring back here but partial pressure of carbon dioxide are not so high what is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in arterial blood do you think arterial blood has carbon dioxide it has carbon dioxide yes it does have so what is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in arterial blood who will tell me yes please that is 40 yes millimeter of mercury and what is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in vein 46 mm of mercury or at least remember the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the veins of course will be more than the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the arterial side so first thing which you have to remember is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide on arterial side is 40 mm of mercury and partial pressure of carbon dioxide on venous side is 46 mm of mercury is it right now the next concept is that normally how much carbon dioxide content is present in 100 ml of arterial blood of course everyone knows that in arterial blood total amount of carbon dioxide will be less and on venous blood uh, total amount of carbon dioxide will be more now as you are becoming doctors you know you will be uh, studying patients arterial blood gases right and lot of other studies so what is the amount of carbon dioxide present in arterial blood 100 ml arterial blood in a normal person what do you think anyone amount of carbon dioxide which is present in 100 ml of the blood write it down what is that carbon dioxide volumes is equal to yes who will tell me 48 milliliter per 100 ml dl deciliter one deciliter is 100 ml right of course why am writing them in comparison so that you don't confuse them many students confuse the pressures with the volume then volumes with the pressure you have to remember they are different things here pressure is carbon dioxide pressure is 40 and here it is raised and it become 46 and on arterial side the content of carbon dioxide in 100 ml of the blood is 48 ml per dl and carbon dioxide content now on venous side will be of course more than arterial side how much it is 52 ml per dl what does it mean what does it mean it means that whenever 100 ml blood passes through the peripheral tissue which is resting on average it picks up how much carbon dioxide from the tissue 4 ml it picks up 4 ml is that right so now we can say because of course here it is 48 and now it is becoming 52 
it's worth repeating that when we are talking about carbon dioxide transport, of course carbon dioxide is transported through the blood, we must talk about the pressures, we must talk about the volumes and later on I will talk about the forms in which different forms of transportation of carbon dioxide, right? So on arterial side it is 40 pressure and here it becomes 46 and uh, amount of or content of carbon dioxide in 100 ml of the arterial blood is 48 and on the venous side it becomes 52. No problem up to here? Okay. Just for Rivian purpose because you must avoid the video of the transport of oxygen. If we compare oxygen, what is the pressure of oxygen here? I just want to see how good, so that you don't confuse oxygen with the carbon dioxide. So in one diagram I am integrating. So partial pressure of oxygen on arterial side is normally how much? 97 millimeter of mercury or for your personal convenience you can say 100 millimeter of mercury and international literature will agree with you. It's very near to the real. Partial pressure of oxygen on arterial side is 97 or 100 millimeter of mercury. Partial pressure of oxygen on venous side is 40. What? Millimeter of mercury. Now please, why I deliberately put this value? This is oxygen. Oxygen is 40 on venous side. Is that right? Partial pressure of oxygen. But partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 40 on arterial side. Is that right? And in your mind you have to compare arterial and venous oxygens in a different way and in a different your section you should compare the carbon dioxide. Now, content of oxygen in a person who has 15, 15 grams of hemoglobin, right? Not polycythemic, not anemic. Is that right? He has how much uh, oxygen content under the pressure of 97? It is about 20 ml. Is that right? 20 ml per dl. And again compare here that what is the oxygen content on venous side? Yes, please. 15 ml per 100 ml. It means that you have to compare that oxygen comes to the tissue under the pressure of 97, right? Uh, and 100 ml blood containing 20 ml of oxygen when it is passing through the systemic capillaries, it delivers how much oxygen? 5 ml. And simultaneously, it is picking up how much carbon dioxide? 4 ml. Now you understand why it makes a sense, right? That every minute, right, 100 ml blood passing through your resting tissue, delivering 5 ml of oxygen, picking up 4 ml of carbon dioxide. Is that right? And please, when you do the multiple choice questions or you see the patient's report, don't confuse the values related with the oxygen with the values related with carbon dioxide because some households find it very easy and rather luxurious to mix them up without feeling even what they are doing, right? Let's come back to our business that is carbon dioxide transport. So carbon dioxide enters from arterial side under the pressure of 40 millimeter of mercury while every 100 ml of the blood is carrying 48 ml of carbon dioxide already, right? And every minute, 4 ml carbon dioxide is added to the 100 ml blood passing through the capillaries. Is that right? Now, question is that this 4 ml, which is added over here, this is this 4 ml, 4 ml of carbon dioxide. How it is really transported? I've already mentioned all of that cannot be transported in the gaseous form. Right? You have to keep it dissolved. And if you keep it all dissolved, you need very high pressures. So all of that even cannot be transported into dissolved form. So what really happens? Let me explain. The major role in transport of carbon dioxide is produced by RBCs. Major role is played by RBCs. Average student knows RBCs are bringing oxygen. Hemoglobin is bringing oxygen. Above every student knows, and I will explain what are the mechanisms, hemoglobin also help in transportation of carbon dioxide back. It helps there. It plays a big role. By the way, what are the functions of hemoglobin? Just tell me four functions of hemoglobin, not more than that. Right? Two, I will tell you. One function is oxygen transport. Other function is carbon dioxide transport. Remaining two, you will tell me. Functions of hemoglobin. Yes. 
you are going to tell me the functions of hemoglobin. It is laughing at you why you are not telling. It has how many functions? Yes. One is oxygen transport. Right? Every student knows that. Okay, he is too much laughing. No one answering. Yes. Then, second is carbon dioxide transport. It helps in that, of course. We will talk now how hemoglobin, what is the role of hemoglobin. What else hemoglobin is doing? Don't tell me it makes color of the blood red. Of course it does, but that is not a real function of it. What is the special function of it? Oh my God. You have studied biochemistry? I think you will study that after steps. You will get free. <laughs> yes. Someone who has studied the biochemistry. What is the function of protein? There are many functions of protein. Hemoglobin has some very special function. It acts as a buffer protein. In the blood, if there are more protons, you know protons are very nasty molecules. These molecules are very, very nasty. They are highly reactive. They can damage DNA. They can damage cell membranes. They change the pH to acidic form. And if there are too much proton free in the blood, they will make a lot of acidosis. And under acidic situation, your enzymes don't work and body functions will fail. So it is very important to manage these monkeys. And these monkeys are caught by many mechanisms. One of the mechanisms are plasma proteins, including hemoglobin. Hemoglobin has special area. This is a molecule of hemoglobin. You remember hemoglobin was having globin chains. And globin chains must be made of amino acid. Some of the amino acid are having negative charge. And they love to hook these monkeys. Is that right? It's a very important function of the hemoglobin. That hemoglobin provides some areas on the surface of hemoglobin which are negatively charged areas where protons can bind reversibly. What is the advantage? If I'm the hemoglobin, okay, Francisco, you can come here. Let's suppose he's proton and there's one more proton there. Okay, there's one proton and there's another proton coming. Okay, big proton. <laughs> no, okay, so, less than big proton. Just come, H hurry up. Now listen, what is happening that let's suppose that we are having on the plasma protein or on hemoglobin molecule, right? Of course, one function is that transport the oxygen to the tissue. Other is I'm bringing the carbon dioxide back. I will discuss in detail. Another special function is that, what is this? Special areas on the hemoglobin or other plasma protein and these areas can grab protons and keep them under control. It catches the protons, don't allow them to be naughty with the other tissues, right? These protons which bind with the hemoglobin or bind with the plasma proteins, they are not free. And when they are not free, they are not free to change the pH significantly. In this way, hemoglobin holds extra protons, right? Whenever extra protons are produced, to some extent it can catch them and hold them and they are no more disturbing our pH significantly. And if due to some reason, if in the plasma fluid protons become less, there is a tendency for alkalosis, hemoglobin will release the monkeys, go and maintain the pH. Is that right? So this is a very important function of the plasma proteins and hemoglobin that it grabs the extra, always, all the time it is having some monkeys, some protons. But if there are more protons, it will grab the extra protons. And if there are less protons, it will release some of its own protons. In this way, you try to stabilize the proton concentration in the blood, which help to stabilize the monkey concentration, proton concentration, that is That's pH. Have a seat. Right? So, please, you should know four functions of hemoglobin. This is a kid's business. Even high school student will say there is oxygen transport and carbon dioxide transport. It is buffering proteins. Right? Acid base, they play a role in acid base balance. This is the first chapter of biochemistry, acid-based balance, right? pH, buffers. 
what are buffers? Buffers are just a system of molecules which can reversely bind some protons and if there are more protons in the system, they grab them. If there are less protons in the system, they release them. In this way, buffer try to stabilize the major changes in the pH, in the fluids, that's it. And plasma protein, especially hemoglobin is a protein which plays as a buffer also, not only a transporter. Okay, so it's a acid base, right, balance. Now, any other function of the hemoglobin, you may be thinking why hemoglobin is being taught in the lecture of carbon dioxide transport. Very soon we will see hemoglobin really plays a role in carbon dioxide transport, not only oxygen. Any other function of the hemoglobin? I am about to be impressed by someone. No one wants to be impressive. Everyone is humble by nature or by circumstances. <laughs> right? Yes. Okay, let me tell you. You know, at the point of him, not only oxygen can bind, nitric oxide can also bind from the lungs. Nitric oxide can also bind with hemoglobin. And nitric oxide also bind with the beta chains. So what really happens? That hemoglobin not only takes up the oxygen from the lungs, from that area it also takes a little bit nitric oxide and as it delivers oxygen to the tissues, it also delivers nitric oxide to the smaller arterioles and nitric oxide dilates the arterioles. This is another function of hemoglobin. Another function of hemoglobin. Right? Now let's come back. Uh, we are talking about this 4 ml carbon dioxide which is produced every minute and we need to be transported back to the lungs in a safe form, right? What really happens? RBC play a very big role, right? Now, in the RBC, okay, before you, I will make, you have to tell me what is it? What is it? Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. Okay, I'll make it different color so that uh, you don't confuse it with something else. This is your hemoglobin. Uh, let's suppose this is heme group and globin. I've just made monomer, but actually there are a lot of molecules of hemoglobin in one RBC, lot of molecules, right? This is one thing. Then I have to make a very special type of enzyme here. Mm -hmm. That's a very, very smart enzyme. Okay, it's a happy enzyme. This enzyme has a very special function. You know what it does? It loves to fuse the carbon dioxide with water. Now, carbon dioxide, whenever it is present in plasma, of course it is highly lipid soluble. It also crosses the cell membrane of RBCs. So, carbon dioxide is also present in the RBC membrane. Is that right? So carbon dioxide is constantly produced by the cells and under high partial pressure it is pushed from the cells to the interstitial fluid, to the plasma, to the RBCs. Within the RBCs, what really happens? Carbon dioxide level rapidly fall. Why? Of course carbon dioxide level should fall here somehow so that carbon dioxide supply continues there. Where the carbon dioxide go? Actually, this enzyme fuse the carbon dioxide with water. So water and carbon dioxide together under the influence of this enzyme, right? This will convert into what? Yes, H2CO3, that is carbonic acid. Is that right? So what should be the name of this enzyme? Yes, it is called carbonic anhydrase. Actually, carbon dioxide and water can fuse together without this enzyme, but very slowly. But in the presence of this enzyme, carbon dioxide and, and water fuse together and make carbonic acid. And this reaction in the presence of this enzyme is 5,000 times accelerated. So almost, almost instantaneously, any carbon dioxide which is available in RBC is fuses with the water and produces, yes, carbonic acid. And carbonic acid immediately breaks down into, yes, 
बाइकार्बोनेट्स एंड प्रोटॉन्स राइट इन दिस वे कार्बोनिक एसिड अगेन दिस एंजाइम आल्सो प्लेज अ रोल इन दिस पॉइंट एज वेल ब्रेकिंग डाउन ऑफ यू कैन से ब्रेकिंग डाउन ऑफ कार्बोनिक एसिड इनटू प्रोटॉन्स एंड बाइकार्ब इज दैट राइट नाउ एक्चुअली दिस एंजाइम वर्क इन एनी डायरेक्शन इट कैन वर्क इन बोथ डायरेक्शन बट वाई इन आरबीसी स्पेशली वर्किंग इन दिस डायरेक्शन बिकॉज कॉन्स्टेंटली कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड सप्लाई इज कमिंग सो बाय मैस एक्शन इट हैज टू कन्वर्ट कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इन वाटर इन टू कार्बोनिक एसिड एंड ब्रेक इट डाउन इन टू प्रोटोन्स एंड बाइकार इज दैट राइट नाउ वेर द कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इज गॉन इट हैज कन्वर्टेड टू न्यू केमिकल फॉर्म नाउ इट इज इन कार्पोरेटेड विद इन बाइकार्बोनेट इज दैट राइट now uh this proton you know it's a monkey highly reactive right it may damage here and there so it should be grabbed by hemoglobin molecule in the hemoglobin molecule for example in beta chain and other chains also the special type of amino acids and specially histidine amino acids uh they are having special hooks what are these hooks negatively charged points and they can hook these what protons so these protons get hooked with this now are these proton free or they are bound bound are they now free to change ph to change significantly any ph no so in this way this highly dangerous reactive proton is associated with the hemoglobin captured by the hemoglobin right and now we are left with what bicarbonate. bicarbonate if bicarbonate stay here then of course this reaction will stop this product keep on accumulating here naturally this reaction will stop so before you could really study medical sciences nature was working before that and it has done something here bicarbonate is constantly being produced within the rbcs so its concentration in the rbcs is more and plasma fluid is less so it will transfer through a special protein right this bicarbonate will transfer out of the rbcs monkeys have been left in right and apples have come out what are these bicarbonate but there is one problem when constantly protons are being produced and retained in and constantly bicarb are pushed out cell is retaining positive charges so do you think it's good for electron neutrality of the cell that is not good isn't it are you understanding me so what really happens that because bicarb are coming out protons are retained in there is a risk that progressively this will become pathologically positively charged and plasma will become pathologically negatively charged and nature doesn't want things like this in a healthy person actually this protein is exchanger whenever it throw one bicarb out it takes one chloride in this is called bicarbonate chloride exchange or shift chloride shift so actually in systemic capillaries as rbcs are passing through systemic capillaries what is coming out bicarb and what is going into rbcs chloride and there is no fun in telling when chloride will go and water will follow i think you know it isn't it so it means by the time rbcs move from arterial side to the uh, venous side they are little swollen that is one reason that as compared to arterial blood venous blood is slightly more hematocrit about 3% more hematocrit on the venous side am i clear because rbcs are more swollen that is one of the reason why hematocrit is more on the venous blood as compared to the arterial blood of the same person at the same time am i clear now 
how you look at it okay let's call proton the mr monkeys and bicarbonate as mrs monkey you can see very bad monkeys are sitting comfortably with the hemoglobin and mrs monkeys are coming out and blood is moving towards the lungs so actually what is happening monkeys are sitting in the rbcs and mrs monkeys are running outside the rbcs this is how the whole business goes to the lungs is it right if someone asks you how the carbon dioxide is transported from the peripheral tissue to the lungs the major way 90 percent of the carbon dioxide is transported you know there how many carbon dioxide was there how much there 4 ml out of this 4 ml 90 percent of it is transported in the form of bicarbonate but bicarbonate are where in the plasma but where they were made in the RBCs so this is the role of RBCs and this is the role of hemoglobin because that is buffering protons believe me if hemoglobin does not buffer the proton venous blood pH will be really very acidic thank god it is little acidic is that right you must be knowing pH uh, on arterial blood is normally how much 7.2 7 dead I mean uh, not dead but really acidosis 7.40 and pH on venous side is 7.36 the real difference is 0 0.04 between arterial venous side normally right so there's a little uh, difference in uh, proton concentration not big difference thank God 90% of the carbon dioxide is today onward you have to remember 90% of the carbon dioxide is transported from the peripheral tissue to the lungs in the form of bicarbonates am I clear okay but actually some of it is about 5% of carbon dioxide okay 90% is going there now we can divide it 90% has gone in is that right but 5% of it is in dissolved form 5% of carbon dioxide can be kept into dissolved form under the pressure of 46 millimeter of mercury partial pressure of carbon dioxide so it means whatever carbon dioxide is being produced whatever carbon dioxide is produced every minute only 5% of that can be kept into solution form by partial pressure of 46 millimeter of mercury how much is the 5 percent 4 ml 2 ml 1 ml that will be 25 percent my friend your mathematics is like me if you have 4 ml carbon dioxide right out of that 90 percent is as bicarbonate 90 percent bicarbonate mean out of 4 ml how much is the 90 percent yeah 3.91% so yeah 3.6 right 3.6 ml is going as bicarb and about 0.2 ml that is 5% 5% is present as dissolved form is that right and 5% of carbon dioxide in dissolved form what is the 5% of 4 ml anyone good in math about about approximately 0.2 ml right and remaining 5% even though books differ a little bit but anyway remaining 5% is present in special form or that is called carbamino carbamino proteins especially carbamino hemoglobin now let me tell you what is meant by the carbamino hemoglobin okay let me make a hemoglobin monomer this is heme and this is globin chain right globin chain of course like all other i make globin chain here like all other peptides it should have on one side amino nh2 is that right am i right another end should be 
carboxyl am i right and in between there should be many many what amino acid this is terminal amino acid on one side this is a minor group of terminal amino acid on other side clear right here some of the monkey protons were held for buffering purpose so these protons were produced by conversion of carbon dioxide into carbonic acid and then when carbonic acid broke down these protons were held here but moreover some carbon dioxide directly react with the amino groups some carbon dioxide directly react with the amino group and this CO2 this is CO2 in a different way like this and when any protein on amino end is having carbon dioxide in this form reaction of carbon dioxide this later on it will reverse in the lung is that right in the tissues when carbon dioxide is coming uh, within the RBCs hemoglobin on the peptide chains on the amino end carbon dioxide physically and chemically react with the amino group and convert into this form now this molecule is called carbamino hemoglobin what is this called carbamino hemoglobin is that right so about five percent of the carbon dioxide is transported as carbamino hemoglobin a very little carb, uh, carbon dioxide directly react with some of the plasma proteins amino group you know there are plasma proteins albumins globulins right fibrinogens they do have their amino groups also some carbon dioxide react there as well and plasma protein also convert into carbamino compound where when they are going towards back to the lungs to the venous side is that right but most of the carbon uh, most of the carbon dioxide in carbamino compound form is with hemoglobin because hemoglobin concentration is four times more than concentration of some plasma proteins am i clear so in how many forms carbon dioxide is transported yes three forms right again let's make a summary here that in how many forms carbon dioxide is transported carbon dioxide is transported 90 percent or different some books say 80 percent anyway as by carbonates which are formed in RBCs but transported in plasma right number two about five percent is in dissolved. dissolved form and this dissolved form is under what pressure 46 millimeter of mercury of partial pressure of carbon dioxide. and five percent is as carbamino you know compounds especially hemoglobin is that right this is how carbon dioxide is transported through the venous blood back to systemic venous blood eventually back to the lungs towards the lungs rather not back to the lungs towards the lung another important thing you remember that uh, here we see that protons are reacting with the hemoglobin when protons react with hemoglobin then affinity of hemoglobin for the oxygen is increased or decreased last time we discussed oxygen is sitting like ladies on hemoglobin car and when insects of proton come ladies will jump hopefully out actually what happens that when carbon dioxide enters into RBCs and eventually convert into bicarb and generate protons these protons when they bind with the hemoglobin this protonated hemoglobin has less affinity for oxygen so actually presence of carbon dioxide facilitate the delivery of oxygen to the tissue and those tissues which produce more carbon dioxide of course they need more oxygen so it makes sense that when you are doing exercise right tissue is producing more carbon dioxide more carbon dioxide generating more protons in RBCs and these protons make the hemoglobin acidic and acidic hemoglobin cannot hold the oxygen well so curve will shift towards left or right 
So oxygen association dissociation curve will shift to the right. It means that hemoglobin which is acidic due to presence of protons is unable to hold the oxygen as tightly as it could in the absence of the protons. So protonated you can say hemoglobin uh, has less affinity for oxygen. So this favors the supply of so any tissue which is working more producing more carbon dioxide is going to get more oxygen. oxygen. This effect in the peripheral tissue is called Bohr's effect. What is that called? Bohr. What are the spellings of Bohr? My spellings are very poor. Oh, we can write like this. Bohr's effect. Bohr's effect. So, what is Bohr's effect? Bohr's effect is effect uh, of the carbon dioxide in the peripheral tissue on the hemoglobin when due to the carbon dioxide presence, the protons which are generated bind with the hemoglobin and reduce the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. So, help in delivery of more oxygen to the tissues which are producing more carbon dioxide. Am I clear? For teaching just myself. You are also learning few things. Good. Now, I think enough in the tissues. Let's go and reach to the lungs. What happens when all the system goes into lungs? I think let me make it even bigger so that we can make a Did I tell you the four functions of hemoglobin? Not, not to Okay, this is a out of proportion diagram of pulmonary capillary and here this RBC with a lot of monkeys in you know protons captured with the hemoglobin has arrived and outside that all the Mrs. monkeys what were they? Bicarbonate. Bicarbonate were present inside or outside? outside. They were outside. Okay. Bicarbonate are traveling in the blood outside. Of course, we will not forget our, what was this? Hemoglobin and this is a globin chain and at some special points, they are having, they are hooked up with the protons, yes, monkeys, yeah, you will remember it forever. And some carbon dioxide is of course present here also, C double O H. You remember that? Carbaminophon. Right? So we are showing carbaminophon of carbon dioxide here. Carbon dioxide present in which form? Bicarbonate, and of course you will not forget some carbon dioxide is present in as as carbon dioxide dissolved into plasma. So these are the three forms in which this is one form, this is the second form and this is the third form. Blood goes to the pulmonary capillaries and bringing the carbon dioxide. Of course, partial pressure of carbon dioxide here is how much? 46. Partial pressure here is very, very low. Partial pressure of carbon dioxide is very low. So this dissolved carbon dioxide will shift to the alveoli. That is the step number one. Even though dissolved carbon dioxide was very small, but this is the dissolved carbon dioxide which shift from the plasma to the alveoli. When it shifts to the alveoli, then naturally the concentration of what is this? Carbon dioxide become less in the plasma and of course it becomes less in the RBC also because it will little carbon dioxide which may be in the RBCs will also shift out, right? And under these circumstances when partial pressure of carbon dioxide is dropping, carbamino form of the carbon dioxide comes out of its fixation point and this detaches and this also of course it goes through three multiple step first it breaks down from there into fluid of the RBC then fluid of the plasma and then eventually there. So these two forms of the carbon dioxide have escaped. Any question here? Now we come to the real form which is the 90% of carbon dioxide which is present as bicarb. What to do with it? What will happen to it? Now listen carefully. Actually, when this started its travel towards that, at that very time it was having a lot of proton buffered with hemoglobin. Is that right? 
with that it was having very little bicarb in and more bicarb out and it was having a little carbon dioxide also in is that right now when it reach here everything reverses why the things reverse because the little carbon dioxide which is present in slips out and goes away when carbon dioxide drastically fall within the rbc again listen what is happening carbon dioxide levels are very low in alveoli so carbon dioxide from plasma will shift to the alveoli then carbon dioxide little carbon dioxide which was present in rbc will also shift to the plasma rbc becomes severely deficient in carbon dioxide when it become deficient in carbon dioxide then those enzymes what was that enzyme name carbonic anhydrase that work in reverse direction what it will do it will take the proton and whatever little bicarb was in it will take that bicarb this proton and bicarb put together make h2co3 and then break down into carbon dioxide and water right let me make here in a big way what really happens there this was your hemoglobin and this was globin form here your monkeys were hooked right which were your protons is it right and of course we have already discussed that at the amino end right some carbon dioxide was present here as making carbon amino compound is it right uh already what was there mostly bicarb was present outside isn't it very little bicarb present inside mostly it was present outside but lot of chloride present inside is that right and of course we will not forget that chloride bicarb exchanger which is also called protein band 3 what is this protein name band 3 you may be thinking it's funny name it's better than some doctor put their name on this that maybe tomorrow this protein is called Exxon, Exxon, Molana, Valerie, uh, Johanna protein it's difficult to remember so thank God they just call it band 3 protein what is band 3 protein actually when they do electrophoresis of the proteins of RBCs it makes a band which is at position number 3 thank God they just call it band 3 proteins which are abundantly present in RBC membrane and they have one function at least we are very clear right now that they are concerned with exchange of chloride and bicarb now what really happens that suppose this is alveoli here carbon dioxide level is very low so from the plasma carbon dioxide going to the alveoli and then carbon dioxide going from here this will take this carbon dioxide plus because carbon dioxide inside the cell is very rapidly going this reaction will be now promoted by your friend carbonic anhydrase right and this carbonic anhydrase will reverse in work in reverse direction uh, yeah these monkeys will start binding and here is bicarb now listen carefully actually all the reaction which was going in RBC it will reverse in its direction because initially in the peripheral tissues reaction was carbon dioxide carbon dioxide going to the bicarbonate why it was in this direction because in the tissues carbon dioxide was in high concentration in the lungs because carbon dioxide is escaping right when carbon dioxide level will drop reaction will move that carbonic acid will start breaking into carbon dioxide and water then bicarbonate and protons will fuse together to make what is this carbonic acid then within the RBC bicarbonate are consumed so their level goes very much down so bicarbonate will start coming from out and so as RBC is releasing carbon dioxide basically it is breaking down carbonic acid actually it is fusing the protons and protons release from these monkey position right buffered protons with bicarb and because RBC is getting progressively poor in bicarb so plasma bicarb are constantly shifting into 
RBC is. So you can say plasma that is the Mrs. what? Mrs. monkey coming in and monkey is going to jump around the together they make carbonic acid and then they break down into carbon dioxide and water this baby monkey will jump out all the way. Is that right? So of course this protein whenever it is transporting the bicarbonate into RBC again now chloride will go out. Am I clear? Is there any problem up to this? Now as in the peripheral tissue we were talking about Bohr's effect. What was happening in the peripheral tissue? Carbon dioxide was being pumped, loaded on the hemoglobin. Carbon dioxide was coming to the hemoglobin, providing the hemoglobin with protons and helping in release of oxygen. This was what was happening in peripheral tissue. But in the lungs, opposite will occur. In the lungs, oxygen is being loaded to the what? RBCs. So actually, in the lungs what really happens more and of course partial pressure of oxygen is high here from here it was it was about 100 millimeter of mercury in venous blood which is coming of course uh, systemic venous blood which has become now pulmonary arterial blood this blood which is coming to the pulmonary capillary it is having partial pressure of oxygen about 40 so oxygen is coming here and then oxygen is going in this oxygen when bind with what is this place him now as soon as heme gets loaded with the oxygen, it kicks the monkey out. Who was the monkey? Protons. This is a seat for the ladies, not for the monkeys. <laughs> so when oxygen start coming in, monkeys will jump away. So it means actually higher pressures of oxygen, right, which is going to drive the hemoglobin to oxygenated form, actually help the proton to deload and this helping of the entry of the oxygen which help the proton to be deloaded from hemoglobin actually help the bicarbonate to react with the free protons and eventually release as carbon dioxide. So it means again this is mutual benefit that oxygen is coming from the alveoli to the plasma to the RBCs bind oxygen oxygen is binding with the what hemoglobin it reduces the capability of hemoglobin to hold protons it releases the protons so actually this release proton will of course react with the bicarb and eventually help in release of co2 this effect of oxygen on the hemoglobin this is an effect of the oxygen on the hemoglobin that hemoglobin will help in deloading of carbon dioxide in pulmonary capillary. This effect is called Haldane effect. What is it called? Haldane effect. So here is Haldane effect. Now please compare both because in many MCQ students confuse. The Bohr's effect in the peripheral tissue, Haldane's effect in, in systemic capillaries there is Bohr's effect and in pulmonary capillaries there is Haldane effect. And both effect involve the altered behavior of hemoglobin. Again, in the peripheral tissue, carbon dioxide reduces the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. So oxygen is more effectively delivered to the peripheral tissue. This is called Bohr's effect. In the pulmonary capillary, what happens? Presence of high concentration of oxygen binding with the hemoglobin help the hemoglobin to release proton which react with bicarb and eventually help in release of carbon dioxide towards the alveoli. Is that right? And this effect is called Haldane's effect. So do you have any question? There's no question. It's so intelligent. Simply there's no question. Okay, then class dismiss.